Hello everybody, here on the channel I like to feature a wide variety of cars, but I am very aware of the fact that in the age of social media, many people now have very unrealistic expectations of what is normal, or even worse, how much money you have to spend in order to have some fun. I love a Ferrari as much as the next girl, and I had a great weekend last week with the fabulous GTC4 Lusso a 332,000 pound, 700 horsepower V12 luxury missile. But for me, as I'm sure it is for you, I can still remember a time when the absolute best car in the world was simply the one that I could actually drive or afford. And so for that reason, as soon as the Ferrari went back, I phoned my friends at Kia and I asked them to give me the cheapest press car in the entire UK fleet. And this is what they gave me. It's a Kia Picanto 2. Not the cheapest car you could possibly buy from Kia, but genuinely the cheapest car on the press fleet and representative of the entry level car that Kia sell here in the UK. Now, this vehicle is £12,050 on the road, making it only £550 more expensive than the panoramic roof on the Ferrari. So what do you get for your £12,000? Well, this is a city car and it sits in the same category as something like the Toyota Igo or the Skoda City Go, the VW Up. There are actually two versions of this car now. You have the regular one as we've got here and the X-Line, which is an attempt at making the Picanto more appealing to younger buyers. It's a little bolder, has chunkier looks and you sit a little bit higher. Pointless if you ask me, but apparently that's what the market wants. Unlike some of their rivals, the Picanto is actually available with a whole range of different engines. You have three to choose from. The entry level is a one litre, three cylinder, naturally aspirated, with about 66 horsepower. At the top of the tree, you've got another three cylinder, this time turbocharged, pushing out a mighty 99 horses. But in the middle and making up the bulk of sales is this four cylinder, 1.25 litre double overhead cam engine, making a marvelous 83 horsepower. Now, that might not sound like a lot to dedicated petrol head types like us, but in fact, it's actually better than many of its rivals and gets allegedly just over 50 miles to the gallon. Now, for many buyers of this kind of car, they're not really interested in what's up front, but rather what's in the back. And here, the Picanto scores highly. It's got a class leading 255 liters of storage space, which is 50 liters better than the previous version. And ahead of that, the rear row of seats was actually pretty generously spaced too. Now, it's no long wheelbase S-Class, but you can get four adults in here, provided they're not all six, six bodybuilders. For about £1,300 over the entry level one, the two gets you a leather steering wheel, leather on the gear gator, a height adjustable driver's seat. You've also got Bluetooth for your music, four speakers instead of two, electric windows front and rear, You've also got heated and electrically adjustable side mirrors. Perhaps most importantly also, air conditioning is now standard. Every Picanto above this also replaces that small monochrome display in the middle with a nice big color touchscreen. And some of them even have Android Auto and Apple CarPlay too. You've got options for better speaker systems. You can have a full leather interior, cruise control, a speed limiter, an electric sunroof. You can even get a wireless phone charger. And some of these things are features which are not standard on cars costing in some cases 10 times as much. Now, if you are thinking of letting a young driver loose for the very first time in one of these, then fear not because there are plenty of safety systems as standard. Now you've got the boring stuff like ABS, but you also have traction and stability control to help keep those rampant 83 horses in check. If you spec that assistance pack, you've also got, of course, the Ford Collision Assist, but there are other things too, like, for example, the excellent visibility, which will make a difference. And this car, unlike even the Volkswagen Up GTI, has disc brakes all round. Really is a very good car to learn to drive in. I talk about it a lot as though it were a car exclusively for young or new drivers, 
But the truth is that the Picanto actually has a lot of potential roles that it could fulfill. You could have it in a city, and although it's not a uh, zero emission car, it is relatively low, and therefore hopefully won't get you penalized in too many places. Kia do not make a diesel or even hybrid Picanto. All of them are petrol because they believe that is the best compromise for this type of vehicle. Petrol engines are lightweight, compact, and efficient. They're responsive and they suit city driving very well indeed. All of the engines in the range are mated to this five-speed manual gearbox, which is actually a real joy to use. So if you are a new driver, you have absolutely no excuses for poor gear changes whatsoever. At the opposite end of the scale, I can also see the appeal of this car for older drivers. In fact, my girlfriend's grandmother has an earlier Picanto and she loves it, because in her words, there is enough space in here for four old people and four bags of old people's shopping. Perfect, really. Living in the countryside, there's also an awful lot to be said for a car with this kind of form factor. You have plenty of room on the road, and there have in fact been at least two incidents where I've been very grateful to be in the Picanto, where other vehicles, large vans or lorries, have come around the corner considerably over the white line. And were I driving, say, a Bentley Continental, I may have been having a very awkward and difficult conversation with the Bentley PR department. But as I was in the Picanto, not even a scratch. Brilliant. Something like this would also be well suited to duty as a station car if you're a commuter type and perhaps have something very nice on the driveway, but you don't want to leave it parked door to door with some banged up old Fiesta. Well, the Picanto would be perfect in that role. In fact, I can see it going down very well as a third or fourth car in perhaps a fairly well-to-do household because, well, it's small size means that you can always find space for it. The fact that it is easily insurable means that the kids, when they learn to drive, can drive it. It's easy enough to take into town. It's narrow enough that you can get it through even the tightest of country lanes. And it is fairly practical. You put the rear seats down and, no, it's not an estate, but you've got plenty of storage for a basic tip run, perhaps even the odd small IKEA visit. No Billy bookcases though, mind. Because this isn't the sort of car you might imagine you'd usually see on this channel, I'm of course always going to judge it by different criteria. All of the controls in here are light, and that's what they should be. This is a really easy car to drive. Now I've put, apparently, well, about 800 miles on this car. They've been really enjoyable. I've actually done a couple of big journeys with it too, and that's not really what it's built for, but I've been surprised with it. It's actually done it fairly well. My overall fuel economy has been about 44 miles per gallon. The range isn't great. It's got a pretty small tank and I'm going to have to fill it up fairly soon actually because it's running quite low. Capacity I believe is about 35 litres. So if you are going to do a lot of miles, you are going to have to be stopping for fuel quite a bit. Again, were this an Aston Martin or a BMW, I certainly would hold that against the car. but. You can't, it's not what it's designed for. Those 83 horses are plenty to pull this car along. And there's a reason that Kia have this particular vehicle on their fleet, because this trim level is the most popular for people to order. It's actually quite similar to the Sportage that I had not too long ago. People will generally go for either the two trim level, so one above the basic, or they'll go for one of the much higher end trims, the GT Line or GT Line S. In the case of the Picanto, the 2 makes up something like 36% of sales, with the GT line about 33%. If you could, I would recommend going for the nicer spec car, because it is just going to be, well, a little better in every way, and a much more enjoyable place to spend your time. I believe this is also the most popular engine, with not too many people going for the 99 horsepower Turbo 3, but I think that would be the petrol head engine of choice. It's not an up GTI, but it's certainly going to be no slouch. It's only really pulling away where a new driver might have any issues, because the engine has almost no torque, 
there is something of an art to getting it off the line. However, for the more seasoned driver, it's actually a very engaging and enjoyable car. The steering, light though it may be, is relatively direct and there seems to be something of a hallmark amongst Kias. They do drive really nicely. Now, I've been in a few cars like this where you're constantly aware of the fact that it may topple over. And this one isn't too bad in that regards. There is of course only so much Kia are ever going to be able to do about the laws of physics. But when you're really pressing on, the back end starts to get a little bit playful to remind you to slow down and that you aren't still in the Aston. Some of the interior controls, like the indicators, do feel a little bit last generation, but they're actually very nice to use and they feel very solid. It's in a vehicle of this type, which has a chance of being actually bought outright or on a higher purchase, where that seven year Kia warranty really does come into its own, because it means that you are gonna have a heck of a lot of reasonably worry-free motoring. And this car's predecessor was at one point in time voted the most reliable vehicle in Britain. That's not bad. Kia and their sister company Hyundai regularly top consumer reliability reports, and that isn't something that customers here should continue to ignore. Petrol heads in particular still have something of a fascination with German cars, but if my eyes are anything to go by, it does seem like the general public are beginning to cotton on to just how good value these Korean alternatives can be. Even on the interior front, the Volkswagen Up does have a clever solution for your mobile phone, but in any trim level above this, I think the Kia screen is a far superior solution, especially when you've got one equipped with Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. On the exterior, I think that the Toyota iGo may be the more successful styling exercise. I prefer the Japanese combination of curves and creases. This is no ugly car, particularly in this interesting and unusual colour. It is technically orangey. Would go well on a 70s car, this. Really well. I like an old Aston Vantage in this colour. That would look proper. All new versions of the Picanto are supplied with an intelligent stop-go system, auto start stop in other words, although this slightly older car doesn't have it. They also apparently come with hill start assist, another thing that this press vehicle is not equipped with. Stop start I could do without, but hill assist in this car would actually be genuinely useful. On the longer journeys that I've done, the seats aren't the most comfortable, but for anything this side of 100 miles, they do the job all right and I happen to know that the seats in the higher trim cars are indeed much better. In fact, on the motorway, it doesn't even buzz its head off, which some smaller engine cars can do. At 70 mile an hour, you're sitting just above 3000 RPM and the car is very pleasant to be in at that speed. You can actually rev match in it, although heel and toe is not so easy because the brake pedal is a little too sensitive. So as you're trying to modulate the throttle, it's very easy to sort of wind up hitting the brakes a bit too much. So that's good, because that's going to stop Junior from trying anything too fruity. It does actually sound all right when you rev it out. Not the best, it's no Honda VTEC lump. But working through the gears is a pleasant exercise, and as a car to just get about in, I can't find much fault with Picanto. I really can't. The fact is that anybody who looks down on this car as being a little bit rubbish, especially if they haven't actually owned or even driven a car before, should consider themselves very lucky indeed. And I would like to take this moment to invite everyone that's stayed until the end of the review to share in the comments section what your first driving experience was in. Either the first car you drove or perhaps the first car that you owned. I suspect we may get quite a few unusual and potentially humorous answers from you all because I know you've got some very interesting stories to tell. And I hope that in some small way we can perhaps remind the, uh, the kids that they are very, very lucky with the cars they've got to choose from. My first car was a Peugeot 407 SW, that's the uh, sport wagon, with a 1.6 diesel. Not a bad car actually, it was in metropolitan blue. The reg number was HN05YGT. I was really happy to get a car with GT on the reg number. That made it somehow seem a lot more exciting than it really was. An odd choice for a first car, I know, but I needed something that was a little bit more practical. It's a car that's so exciting and so dramatic, I don't 
actually have a proper picture of it. Every single other car that I've owned, I've got loads of photos of, but not that one. As a city runabout, the Kia works well. Through a nice little countryside village, you know, basically invisible. Turning circle is superb in this car. So there we have it. The Kia Picanto 2 with the 1.25 litre four cylinder petrol. It's a good car. And sometimes we need to remember that merely being a good car isn't a bad thing at all. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment below, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you all for the next one. Bye bye.